Deer Resistant Plants, Kathy Cho and Kim Lacey. Isn't he pretty? Mm -hmm. The Leon County deer population, the deer population has increased, decreased, depending on how you look at it. Does have declined as a result of more doe permits being issued and the number of bucks increases because of the antler restrictions. The white-tailed deer is a beautiful creature. It can be found in any part of Leon County. Pastures, roadside, woods, yards, flower beds, orchards, and your garden. We find much beauty when observing them in our surroundings until they show up in our gardens. So why does that happen? Anybody have any ideas? That's stuff they like. <laughs> Are they invading our space or have we invaded their space? Let's stop a moment and consider why they show up in our gardens. Anyone have any ideas why? They're probably hungry. When are you likely to see them? Early morning and late evenings? There he is as the sun is going down. They're very smart creatures. Bucks with record-breaking Boone and Crockett antler scores didn't get that way by being dumb. So, with that said, they forage at night and full moons, just like a shift worker, working the night shift and sleeping, laying low during the daylight hours. What is your movement like? You're moving around during daylight hours and sleeping at night. See the correlation here? Deer most likely aren't going to appear in your garden in the middle of the day. But I'm not saying positively during the day you don't see them, especially if their foraging conditions are less than favorable. But most likely you won't. Understanding the nature of the creature is your first defense in protecting your crop. So let's talk about what they eat. Deer are browsers and have very selective and distinct preferences. Browsing means above their heads. Their preferred diet is made up of twigs, buds, leaves of trees, and shrubs. The American Beauty berry and acorns in the fall, they really like. One of the most common culprits for browsing on trees are deer. They love nibbling on fruits and nuts and have no shame leaving their mark. Tree guards, repellents, and fences can be great deterrents in keeping them away and protecting your trees. This past fall, nature provided a bumper crop of acorns. They were plentiful. When nature provides for its creatures and man doesn't interfere with its habitat, they usually avoid humans. First of all, because we smell to them. Deer hunters provide deer with corn, molasses, mineral supplements, and planted food plots. With an acquired taste for corn, it's no wonder they lurk on the edge of your cornfield and wait for the opportunity to die. Deer are adaptable. Browsers feeding on green spring and summer plants. When their preferred foods become unavailable, guess what? You got it. They look for other sources to survive, and that could very well be your orchard or garden plot. So many people we know, even in suburban areas, have deer problems. It's not just folks like us that live in the country. Not only those that live in a country life encounter the challenging challenges presented by the hungry deer. 
A lush suburban garden in a gated subdivision that backs up to a patch of woods is perfect habitat for deer. Deer specifically occupy the edges of pastures, grasslands, meadows, foraging from late afternoon to late early evening, early morning hours. And they'll party all night long during a full moon. Then they'll settle back into the woods and rest during the day. When you spend countless hours growing and tending to your garden or landscape, only to have the deer show up to the salad bar, the resulting sentiments will likely be frustration, rage, and heartbreak. Most deer plant consumption in gardens and yards occurs in early spring and during drought conditions. Deer love to graze on many types of ground covers, especially when new tender growth emerges in the spring. In the spring, when bucks need added nutrition to build muscle and grow antlers, and does are entering the third trimester and preparing for lactation, late summer, early fall, deer are consuming more vegetation to add body condition and to go into colder winter months. Deer are picky eaters and like smooth surfaces, foliage, and leaves that don't have a strong smell. Deer resistant is not deer proof. Deer resistant means less likely to consume. There is no such thing as deer proof. Amen. <laughs> Delicious food for deer. The key characteristics of their restaurant menu. Deer love soft foliage, stems and blooms. They prefer tender, broad leaves without fuzz or smell. They're herbivores, meaning they are plant eaters. The shrubs deer like are smooth leaf azaleas. Azaleas are good, nutritious food for deer. You know, in the spring when all your azaleas are blooming, they're so beautiful, and then the deer just comes in and just has a feast with those blossoms. <clears throat> the shrubs deer dislike. Landscape shrubs are not the preferred choice. Deer resistant shrubs, boxwood, arrowwood, verbenum, bluebeard, butterfly bush, your shrub roses, Daphne. Common boxwood is a very common shrub sold for landscaping. It contains alkaloids that are toxic to humans and most animals. It is one of the most deer tolerant because deer prefer tender broadleaf plants. Mountain laurel is evergreen. The deer ignore it. Juniper varieties are members of the cypress family and give off a heavy fragrance. The butterfly bush, it's invasive, but it's a pollinator magnet and deer tend to avoid it. The hibiscus dislikes the leaves, but will eat the blooms. Bayberry found in the wild is deer resistant. Its fragrance deters them. Okay, for trees, deer like resistant shrubs. There are like deer resistant shrubs, there are several deer resistant trees. The silk tree or mimosa are deer resistant. They are not a landscape, not a good landscape choice. They are an invasive plant. The bald cypress is unplatable. The cherry laurel, the holly, the red bud, the persimmon, they like the fruit but not the leaves. Flowers, the plantain lilies. Hostis is a genus of plants commonly known as hostas. The plantain lilies. Hostas is their very favorite, and notice where these plants grow. Under trees, shade, which means that the deer aren't seated in the front of everyone. 
you know, they, they, they walk along the edge of the woods. These plants grow under the shades of trees, which means that the deer aren't seated in front of everyone, so other herbivores also love hostas. So it is a challenge for you to grow without it being eaten by a herbivore because they can just walk along the edge of the woods and take a nip here and take a nip there. And they're so pretty, but it's a challenge to grow without the deer or the rabbits getting them. Daylilies are like a farm to table restaurant. The flowers only last one day, so they're always fresh. So if you're growing daylilies, deer love them. Pansies are soft, broad leaves, and sweet. They're also an edible flower that you can use in salads or to garnish baked goods. They love tulips, crocus, hydrangea. They're plants that show up in the early spring. The late summer menu would include dahlia as it has soft and smooth foliage. Climbers or vines like morning glory and clematis, fruiting vines like grapes. On their menu. Carol, do you have trouble with deer and your berries? We have deer fruit. Okay, <laughs> but if you didn't, <coughs> they would eat them. So your deer resistant vegetables, root crops, beets, potatoes, radish, and carrots. They consume the tops, the, the tops, the green part of the plant, but not, they're not able to eat the root. So they will destroy the top of the crop, but you'll still have your vegetable in the ground. Do you know why deer don't like these vegetables? No, deer aren't your kids. We all know our children don't like vegetables. Cucumbers, artichoke, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant. Anybody have any idea why they wouldn't like these types of plants? The nightshade family. That. It would be toxic. Their prickery. You know the the cucumbers, the the <coughs> squash plants. They all have like a texture to them, so they don't like texture. They like smooth. And yes, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant are nightshade. They'll avoid onions and garlic. They don't like fennel or anise. And they don't like pumpkins. Lavender and mint aren't on their menu. They don't like fuzzy plant like lamb's ear, zucchini leaves, or borage. They hate needle shaped foliage like segmented leaves like fennel or marigolds, and marigolds also smell. Thin leaves or petals are not their favorite. Deer-resistant perennial, shade plants. Columbines attract lots of hummingbirds, bees, butterflies, and deer won't touch them, and columbines will naturalize. Bleeding heart, lamb's ear, it has a fuzzy texture. Poppies, they spread fast. They're an excellent ground cover, but they're poisonous. Sun loving, lavender attracts the hummingbirds and with an unpleasant smell to deer. The bearded iris is sun loving and poisonous to deer. Yarrow, deer find unattractive and foul smelling, but it attracts butterflies and bees. Yarrow is a great deer bearer. Lily of the Nile, Oliveira, Agave, African Daisy, Catmint is a fuzzy texture and pungent smell. Dusty Miller, they dislike the velvety texture. Your alum, your ornamental onions, rosemary, snapdragon, calendula, <coughs> aster, foxglove is toxic. Heliotrope, it smells and it has a sandpaper texture. Daffodils are toxic. Zinnias dislike the leaf texture. The salvia, they dislike the scent. And the poppies, again, they're toxic. 
verbena, and vinca. Um, your dairy resistant herbs dill, chamomile, basil, mint, oregano, parsley, thyme, lemon balm, cilantro, lemongrass. All the above, it has a smell. Okay, this information was uh, taken from the Agriculture, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension website. Or, uh, okay, so here's the listing of the plants which deer do not seem to like well enough to severely damage by eating it. Deer can't read and when they, they're hungry they'll eat almost anything so that's our misnomer, okay? They will eat what, if they get hungry. But you know the basic deal is you, you try to find plants that either are off-putting by the smell, the taste, because they're toxic, or it's uh, the, the, the way, you know, what it's made up from, like Kathy was talking about. So this is Texas sage. Everybody knows Texas sage. It's a class of native, classic native here in the southwest landscape, and, and it grows well in poor soil. In addition to being deer resistant, uh, they don't like the smell of it, and it's also drought tolerant. And this is your Esperanza. Some people call it yellow bells or yellow trumpet. It needs minimal care, and it's the smell again. They don't like it as much. And so then we go to the Olean, which there's a big, you know, red light on that because it's very toxic, especially to horses. So I have an issue with that. So we don't plant oleander at my house. Uh, but it is beautiful. You'll see it, you know, down the Gulf Freeways because it's gorgeous. So, and there are different colors of them, but it is, uh, it's actually Mediterranean region where it originates from. Uh, but like I said, it's very uh, toxic. And so if you do plant it, be careful where you plant it. So, you know, animals and children can't get um, around it. And then we have pomegranate, and it's crazy. That stuff can grow here. Um, it's actually native to North Africa and Western Asia, but I saw pomegranates grown at Love Lady High School. They actually had fruit on them. They were out there in the in the planters. And I'm like, this is flowers. This is crazy. But anyway, it does grow here. And you know, pomegranate is good for the you know the the fruit and the juice and Basically, the pomegranate fruit, it's because of the texture, the hard exterior of it. They don't try to mess, they can't get through it. So, now we have your soft leaf yucca. Of course, any yucca is going to be off putting to them because of the, the razor sharp edges and the points. They don't care for that. And it is native here, we know that. And so, they have a defense against the deer to a point. And we have our native Yopon holly. That everybody has it. You we know it's everywhere. The deers do like the seeds, but it's the, the leaves are all putting to them. And they really, if you notice, you know, they, they really don't bother it that much. Um, and it's also a native. And so around Christmas, you know, I don't see them ever eating it, honestly, unless they're really, really hungry. Um, and then we have our amaryllis. And I am not really, I'm not, not good at this. I'm not good at flowers. Miss Charlene, she could probably tell you a whole bunch about the amaryllis. Um, but um, it's native to Africa, and it's derived from the Greek word amoriso, which means to sparkle, and they do. They're beautiful. And um, not all of the amaryllis uh, varieties are deer-resistant. Um, one species that's considered to be more deer resistant is the um, Amaryllis belladonna. It's got tougher, leather, more leathery leaves and strong stems. And so your angel trumpets. Um, I'm going to have our angel trumpet man here today. But um, they are tropical and native to South America. And you can grow them as a shrub or a small tree, and they don't like the taste or the smell. Deer just, the, the, I, it's weird that deer don't like the, the smell of flowers. That's just amazing to me. And we do. And we do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, deer prefer to eat on flowers, stems, and leafy green foliage of tall plants, although they'll eat wilted vegetation and pinch, which is why well tended home gardens are so tempting during the dry summer. So just basically let your, let your stuff grow high so they can't reach it. Um, no, I was just joking. But, uh, let's see. Using deer resistant plants in the landscape will help discourage plant consumption. It is so disappointing to plant lovely flowers only to find deer feasting on them. 
create a protective perimeter using deer resistant plants to make it less inviting and interplanting deer resistant plants between plants that they like. So basically you're putting up a, it's like co-planting and they, you know, the, the big brother protects the little brother. Excluding and repelling problem wildlife from the garden. Proper fencing provides the most reliable way to exclude the larger and mammals from the garden. Choose the type of fencing most suitable for the animals that are known to be a nuisance in your area or neighborhood. Carol. Different types of fencing include wire mesh, welded wire, plastic meshes, and electric strands. Wooden fencing often requires added wire mesh or electric fencing to make it effective. When you install a fence, design it so that you can integrate feature modifications if other pests become a problem. Repellents. Animal products such as predator urine, dried blood, and meat proteins that include fear. Repellents based on plant extracts can usually be sprayed directly on plants. First, spray one susceptible plant or part of the plant, then wait a day to see how the plant responds before spraying all of your plants. Some contact sprays might harm plants. Read the label of any product carefully before purchasing. Repellents have the advantage of being less expensive than fencing, but their effectiveness depends on many factors. If possible, for best results, apply repellents before damage occurs. Otherwise, take action as the first sign of damage before the animal becomes accustomed to feeding in your garden. The number of animals in the population near your garden can affect how much damage occurs. Look for hoof prints, split and pointed at the, point, at the front and rounded at the back. Deer droppings in the summer tend to be bunched or clumps. Deer tend to trample plants. Only a few plants are so toxic or distasteful that deer will avoid them altogether. Others are avoided only at certain stages of growth with palatability varying with the plant's age or with the seasons. So let's talk about some of the deterrents that are available on the market. These may make your salad bar, beautiful garden and landscape become known by the deer as the worst restaurant in the woods. Scented sprays, motion activated devices, granules, ultrasonic noise, and fishing line, 15 to 30 pound test, and you don't need a fishing pole. You can get these electric posts at Tractor Supply for less than $2 a piece. You push this in the ground, you take your fishing line, and you go around it. You're creating an invisible barrier. <clears throat> this is going to trigger a flight response from a deer. Knowing how deer work, their eyes don't operate like ours. You have predator eyes in front. Deer have eyes on the side. Your eyes give a 120 degree view and can zoom in on things. Deer have prey eyes on the side of their heads. They have a 300 degree view. They're good at spotting movement from far away and have a wide field of vision, but they can't focus right in front of them. Prey eyes work if something is after them. So they cannot see that invisible fishing line. <clears throat> Their sense of smell and hearing is far better than yours, so that makes up for the blind spot directly in front of them. They can't see the invisible fishing line, but they can smell the dinner you've planted free for those that can take it. As they sneak in to steal a bite, something touches their fur. They're gone. This is a scary encounter for them. So you've created a flight response in them. Fabric row covers tunnels. Electric fence tape, rope, or wire. Use deer repellent sprayed on plants and use it often, especially after a heavy dew and you must reapply it after a rain. Create a protective perimeter using deer resistant plants to make it less inviting and interplanting deer resistant plants between the plants that they like. 
here's some of the products that you can buy. This one's called Deer Out, Deer Repellent. This one is a concentrated spray. That brand is Bob X. It comes in a little handy spray bottle like you'd use in your kitchen with Windex. It comes in granular form. It comes in a pump-up spray. It comes in granules that you can put out like you put your fertilizer out. Then there's solar animal repellents. They're ultrasonic dog repellent latest flame white motion. It can de also detect stray dogs, fox, raccoons, skunks, rabbits. It's a deer deterrent with a flame guard. The Bobex deer repellent uses ingredients that stop deer browsing by using multiple smell and taste deterrents. This animal repellent will keep deer, elk, and moose out of your garden or yard. This liquid deterrent is harmless to all wildlife, including humans, your dog, your cat, birds, and aquatic life. And I, I would think with anything else, you'd want to look for something that's environmentally friendly and not toxic to other animals or wildlife. So does sprinkling cinnamon keep deer away? This is another smell that deer hate and tend to avoid. You can use this to deter deer without worrying about adverse effects on family members or pets. Examples of area repellents considered effective for white-tailed deer are putrescent egg solids, ammonia soaps of higher fatty acids, predator urine, blood, or meat meal, human hair, and bar soap. Effectiveness of these products is variable, typically ranging from 15 to 43% 40 effective. Deer repellent sprays. Make your own spray. You can use an eight ounce white vinegar, six drops of peppermint essential oil, and four drops of rosemary essential oil. Spray your plants. Avoid spraying anything that you plan to eat. So if you spray like just the leaves and not actually your tomatoes or the, your fruit, you can make a DIY garlic spray. A homemade egg-based repellents, they last about two weeks. Essential oil-based sprays up to five weeks. Soap until the scent is gone or it melts. I've heard a lot of people use Irish Spring. You can shave it even. You don't have to just hang the bar. With enough deterrent plants, they may eat a few leaves and decide it's not an inviting table. So remember, most deer plant consumption in gardens and yards occurs early spring and during drought conditions. And as hard as you will try to avoid deer consuming your garden, there will be times that it is just not avoidable. It will happen to you sometime or another. You have to understand the creature to be effective in protecting your crops. Yes, Carol. Okay, I have something else, a success story that Tom has with okra. And okra is planted a little bit later. She plants his like late June, to early July. And when it begins to grow, it grows until September. Two years ago, the uh, deer ate all the leaves, all the blooms. They didn't eat uh, the fruit. I mean, it's not going to come if you don't have a plant. Anyway, so last year, quite by accident, he had 40 ounce peanut butter jars. He put them over the plants and let them grow a little bit more. And he took them off. And Richard had a Brazilian blue green steaks that he gave everybody, he asked everybody to take some. Tom had maybe a dozen. And these peanut butter jars, he didn't put them away. He put them on top of the steak. And the wind created just enough movement and noise that Motion. it scared the deer away. Motion. He didn't touch it. Motion. So he's doing that again this year. And it was an inexpensive 
fix. It was an accident that it should work. <laughs> you know, most people can't afford big high gang fencing like Carol has around her orchard and her berry patch. Fencing tends to be very expensive, but there's things out there that you can do to help protect your crops. Well, I don't know why mine, we have a big garden and it's right there outside, you know, and the dogs aren't outside, but we never have a problem with deer. I see them back by the, you know, I, it's like maybe 50 yards to the creek. But I don't understand why they don't come in the yard. I don't know if they can smell the dogs that have been in the yard or what, but we have never had a deer in the yard, except for the one in the pool one time I had rescued, so it was a baby. But yeah, they've never bothered my yard, none of my plants, none of my garden. I don't know, that's, anybody that's got ideas? So that's the same way. We used to have deer come up to the front of the house because we got big dogs. Well, they, they just, mine are here. in the house, they, they, you know. They smell those dogs. Smell I think they can smell it. Well, my garden is right here and then my driveway. The deer go across my garden and go through. They never bother my garden. We also throw a little bit of corn at the top of the driveway because if, if they've got something to eat, take their mind off of it, more than likely they're not going to consume your plants. No, move on to the next episode. I know this program was entitled Deer Resistant Plants, but we thought that giving you an idea of how this creature survives and giving you ideas of the plants that they don't like will help you in deciding what you should plant. <coughs> and nothing is foolproof. If they're hungry, they may eat. <laughs> well, another thing too, your gardening practices. Your perimeter is woods. You're not going to go and plant your garden right on the edge of the woods. Hopefully you'll plant it closer to your home, you know, and not on the edge of the woods. You know, if you, if you make it simple and easy for them to get it, they're going to get it. Yes, ma'am. You're going to fish him on to everything. No, um, we did this one time. He just pushed in a few of these. And he only put like three strands and went around. And it just kept going. And, and it worked. I had some plants that they ate. I was sick. I was sick that they ate them. But just he like said, we'll fix them. And so we tried this. And this really did, it worked because I didn't have any more episodes. But it's because of the way their eyes see. They They're see. In our garden. They don't bother my flower beds at all. But I have a population. Of so I guess I got lucky. Yes, you probably have plants that they don't like. And like before we moved up here, when we first cleared our timber, I had planted some some plants, and I had planted rosemary in between these shrubs, and. Everybody said, oh, you're going to go back up there next week and all your, all your shrubs are going to be eaten. They're all going to be gone. They never bothered them. Actually, we just cut them off and they're regrowing. They had grown so tall and the deer never bothered them. And I attribute that to interplanting rosemary amongst the shrubs. Something, though, with, you know, anything like the like the twine and stuff like it's just like a deer you know it's just like a hog trap you better go check it I mean, occasionally make sure you don't have anything you caught, know, in it. caught in it because so. I would feel terrible <laughs> but you know you just here's your garden just put this around the corner of it we do have hog panel and then one row of bob wire that's for the cows and so I guess the deer maybe haven't, but it's not that tall, it's, you know, so I don't know if that's helping. Well, a what. deer can leave. Yeah, I know, so I don't know. They've never been in there. Yes, Carol. Several years ago, a number of years ago, a uh, program Doug Welch was giving, talking about deer resistant plants. And also the age of the animal. You have a doe, yes. a fawn, a yearling. Maybe in your yard, and you take a bite of this plant, chewed on it, and 
not sure I like that or not. I'll try another bite. I'll take another bite. Same thing. By the time he takes the third bite, your plant may be completely gone. He's like, I don't really like that. I'm not going to eat anymore. But <laughs> that plant's gone. Anybody else have anything to add or have an experience with the deer eating their vegetables? I know um, you mentioned about the human hair repels, mm -hmm. and I believe your dog hair does as well. So when you, if you take your dogs to the groomers or when you go to get a haircut, sometimes I know in Marque, the gal who does hair, she saves it because various farmers in the area come in and get the human hair from her to repel the deer. So. Well, I know one thing. If you use blood meal in your garden, they can smell that and they don't like it. But beware. I think I created a problem using that because now we have a real mold problem. Mold, gopher, bowl. You know, because they want bugs. So I think I may have created a problem. Solved one problem, but created another. Another thing you might want to try is your used coffee grinds. It's a good shot of nitrogen for your plants. If you're container gardening, it keeps the ants out of your containers, but it smells. And I would think that would also deter them. Your products, you can find many different types of products on Amazon and in your feed stores and the big box stores. And if you look on the labels and read them, they're basically all the same. They all contain the same ingredients. Well, we want to thank you all for coming, and we hope we've given you some good ideas to take away and try, and I hope your gardens flourish, and I hope the deer are, are healthy and have plenty of food and leave your gardens alone.